Hey, hey, here we go. I'm excited today. Well, I'm always excited. Let me start the show every single time by saying I'm excited. Roll yeah. that back, right? But no, excited today for the value that we're going to give to listeners today because Jennifer is here. Jennifer, welcome hey. to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tell the listeners just a little bit why I'm I'm so excited. Do you even know? Because how we're relating real estate to practices today and what you guys do uh, yeah. for physicians, uh, doctors, dentists, and other people that are kind of like e either in that lease agreement scenario or buying, uh, whether they're expanding or creating new, how you guys help um, practices in that particular time of need so huge that's why i'm so excited jennifer tell tell everybody a little bit about who jennifer is and uh where you ended up where you're at today because you're not a physician i'm not a physician but we are licensed real estate agents <laughs> together <laughs> yes we are thanks so much for having me i appreciate it um yeah so i work for a company called car uh we are a healthcare specific real estate firm um, and we are also buyer tenant only representation, which to your listeners may or may not mean anything, but that is really, really important. Basically what that means is we only represent people that are looking to purchase or lease real estate. We never ever represent landlords and we don't represent sellers. And that's a really important distinction because you don't ever want to feel like there's a potential conflict of interest when you're looking at real estate. Let's talk about leases first. How can CAR save uh, a listener uh, even up to $100,000 on the next lease renewal? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the first way is just by getting us involved because we're professionals and that's what we do, right? Um, going back to kind of what you were talking about as far as not having a dog in the fight and all that, if, you, if you're trying to do it yourself, like you're on the losing end of that battle. If you think about the, the landlord or the seller, they have representation, right? And a lot of times these landlords, this is what they do for a living, right? But they still hire somebody to handle that tra transaction for them because that's what, you know, that's what they do for a living. Um, when, when these healthcare professionals go and try to negotiate the deal themselves, or like you said, the dual agency with the same same agent, I tell them, I said, it's kind of like walking into a courtroom as a defendant and expecting the prosecuting attorney to also defend you, right? So does he have the skill set? Sure. Is it in your best interest? No. So the first thing they need to do is use a professional, right? That knows what they're doing. Don't do it alone. Uh, second, as a healthcare professional, I highly recommend they use somebody that has a healthcare focus. Uh, not all tenants are created equally, right? There's a whole strategy involved with how you look at properties, how you negotiate, and taking other things into consideration outside of your rent. You need to look at abated rent. So like a free rent period for, for build out or for getting, you know, your operations up and Transition. running. Yeah, yeah the, the tenant improvement allowance, um, all kinds of different things. Um, so, you know, a lot of times what I have found, and it's really kind of sad is not just healthcare professionals, but just tenants in general that don't use representation, they kind of look at signing a commercial lease like they do signing a lease for an apartment. They think you just go and you ask and you find out what it costs and you sign the document. And when you do that, I mean, man, they are signing away tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. But what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see happen either on a lease or on a purchase? And to say, if we just focus, say, on dental practices. Um, getting laser focused on one property. Um, they treat their commercial space like they would maybe their home, right? When you're out looking for a home, you find the one you want and then you go for it, right? And you just negotiate the heck out of it till you come to a best and final. When people take that same approach with commercial real estate, they're gonna lose. Um, so negotiating on multiple properties in a lease scenario is critically important. One, you want the landlord to know that they're competing for your business. Two, you want to have something to compare it to. You want to be able to look and see, well, why is this landlord offering this, but this landlord's only offering this, right? So you get the comparisons and you use them to get the landlords to move in the direction that you want them to. 
Um, and then not having the right advisors in place, like not using a real estate specific attorney. But now I've become the land owner, the property mm -hmm. owner, and I need to have to work with somebody else to get those other two leases, yeah. those other two units leased up. Yeah, How does question. that make you feel? Yep. Um, you know, our highest and best use of our time is doing what we do well. Um, you can't be all things to all people. Um, and, and our agents get asked to list things all the time because we do such a great job. Um, but the, the cool answer is for that professional that, that wants to hire us, you know, to list their spaces is because we don't list, um, we have a very good read on the listing agents in the market. We know who the good ones are and we know who the not so good ones are, right? Because we're not a threat to them, right? Like we're working with them all the time to get deals done. And so in those scenarios, we're a great um, resource to let the doctor know maybe who they should list it with. So uh, we just kind of pass that off and stay in our lane. And you get a referral for that? Sometimes we do. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, and that resource, that is a big resource. What what markets do you work in in the United States? We currently have about 135 agents all across the U.S. Okay. I can only think of a handful of states where we don't have somebody I know. We don't have anybody in Hawaii. So if there's anybody out there who wants to go to Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> uh, we don't have anybody in Alaska. Uh, but I mean we have ways to, to get deals done in just about every state and just in all the major markets. So we're the largest healthcare specific firm in the country. How often do uh, phys physicians on a build out pay their own tenant improvement, TI? Um, if they're not represented by an agent, typically they they pay 100% of it because nobody's that's a huge that. piece so if the, piece. if the tenant is not represented by an agent it's very typical that that tenant is going to be paying the ti okay. the tenant improvements because that's just what they've negotiated or why would the landlord offer them right right unless the landlord knows that they're competing for their business and they're looking at multiple options but most people aren't doing that right so so yeah i mean if they're doing it on their own none. Um, if they're using an agent that knows what they're doing, it, it can be six figures. How do you get most favorable terms on your lease? Like, um, what's the position you need to take? Um, and for that, I would just say, you know, finding out what's motivating the landlord is pretty important. Um, not all landlords are the same, so you can't approach each landlord the same way. Um, how much time does it take to to do this right? Like, let's talk about a lease scenario. Like, you know, you're not going to go out and start looking for a location for your practice to lease and be ready to move in in 60 days. Like, mm -hmm. that's just not going to happen. It's not like residential. Like you need to give yourself probably a good nine to 12 months. And that's, that's moving at a pretty good clip. Um, and then also knowing how hard to negotiate and when to stop, right? Because negotiating is an important part of real estate, but knowing when to stop negotiating is pretty much just as important, right?